gentlemen, would you please welcome the Chief Executive of the Irish Film and Television Academy, Anya Moriarty. The Irish Academy is very proud to showcase Ireland's television industry and to acknowledge the superb work being achieved by the talented people in this room here this evening. We also present the Academy's highest honour to the Lifetime Achievement Award recipient here tonight. And to tell us more, may I introduce the Irish woman who welcomed Queen Elizabeth to these shores and who knows a thing or two about broadcasting and Irish politics. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Olivia O'Leary. <laughs> When I was an 18-year-old student, and UCD, mind you, was in Earthford Terrace in those days, Pat Kenny walked me home one night from Dwyer's Pub. <laughs> Dwyer's Pub in Leeson Street, and on the steps of my flat in Appian Way, he looked at me soulfully, and he said that he'd like to see me again. And I have to tell you, Cathy, that I'm still waiting. <laughs> However, if he was a bit unreliable on the romantic front, he is utterly reliable on the air. Over 40 years, Pat's become one of the greats of Irish broadcasting, always prepared, always professional, and his audience trust him because they know that he will deliver the very best that radio and television has to offer day after day and year after year. As an interviewer, he can go in hard, and I've often seen him do it, but he... <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and he has no mercy, as I found out once <laughs> when I was in front of him. But, but, but the lovely thing... Uh, oh dear, oh dear. The great thing about Pat, and my goodness, we're really into it now, is that he also knows when to hold back. <laughs> and, and I really mean this, we mourned when Pat left RTE, and the station had to raid the newsroom's brightest star, Sean O'Rourke to maintain the weight and the edge that Pat brought to his morning radio slot. He has won all the prizes, and for me, he's a broadcasting legend. But what do his other colleagues think? Well, let's find out. Well, thanks very much. No one deserves this award more than Mr. Pat Kenny. Well done on this fantastic award. It's so well deserved. Hello, good evening, welcome. Pat, congratulations on your IFTA Lifetime Achievement Award. Pat, congratulations. In the year 1986, Pat Kenny won an award for three different types of programme, the outside track, which was brilliant, the Kenny Report, and he presented Saturday View on the radio. So that gives us an insight into the breadth and the strength and the depth uh, of Pat Kenny as a broadcaster. And my God, has he disimproved. Pat Kenny has been in broadcasting as long as I have been in politics. And that's a long, long time. Can an independent voice actually do anything effective? Oh, I think it can, very much so, because the Senate is very largely a debating chamber. If I get elected, at least I'll go in with a clean slate. I don't go in as a member of a political party. Pat Kenny is, uh, and I say this with respect, is the Darth Vader of Irish broadcasting. Imagine a politician comes along to meet the interviewer. Of all the people you don't want to meet, it's Pat, because he's looking at you, and the politician is gabbling on, and they're talking complete gibberish, and slowly the politician is, is being strangled because they know it's game over, because I've been Pat kenny and it's not good, because he's made me look like a fool. Game over. That's Pat Kenny. Pat has become one of Ireland's foremost and distinguished broadcasters. Hi. 
this has got to be the wall of death, has it? Yeah. You tried it yourself. No, I haven't. We want to film the, the, the tricks, the stunts, the wall of death. Oh, yeah. Is, is it uh, very dangerous? I've had the privilege to sit in studio with Pat on many occasions, and he has always been fair and utterly professional. Look at Paxman over in Britain. Rude, 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 and that's how he supposedly gets a result. Pat gets a better result by being very, very mannerly, being very kind of soft sometimes, but always getting in there because he knows exactly what he's doing. We welcome, please, the wonderful Cher. I don't think people out there realise how many bands you've helped launch on the, on the, yeah. the programme. Well, including, including Amanda, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. She's living proof. So I want to give you wow. this. Wow. 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 Nice one, the egg. Mr. Tom Jones. Miss Dolly Parker. Elton John. Colin Farrell, Sir Michael Kay. People asked me if we were Catholic because we had so many children. I said, no, just horny Baptists. <laughs> now, what do you think of this? Yeah. Oh, half an hour, yeah. I always thought he was more mature than that. Taking Shiv Gurch, Grieve Johnny Logan A. Fain on Power on a Chanche and Ori, Hold Me Now, Agus Istavar on Vuashin, a Tomwich, Balaha and Shah, Sakahar Millennium, Don Trucka Triu, Comortus, Aurani of the Eurofusion. Celine Dion, as you oh, may remember, uh... <laughs> a wonderful chanteuse. Congratulations. Dear Pat, I could not miss your big night with your Lifetime Achievement Award from the Irish Academy. Congratulations. This honor is so well deserved. I remember all these years back when you played a key role in my special night at the Eurovision in Dublin, remember? <laughs> and I know Renee, who is up there, joins me to celebrate this award with you. I send you all my love and my warmest wishes. Congratulations again. Hey, Pat, congratulations. I remember back to Jared and my honeymoon. You were there at the airport with your shiny sports car looking like Steve Silverman. <laughs> and twist us back to your apartment where you gave us your bed and slept on the sofa so as we could have a honeymoon. I think you even lit a few candles around the room, Mr. Romantic. He has the brain the size of a small continent, or a large continent. It's enormous. He's encyclopedic, all 18 editions. The top end of Manson. He's a smart guy. And a lot older than me. Mischievous. You're one of the good guys, Pat. Pat owes me a pint. First of all, I want to thank IFTA, because when you get an award from IFTA, it is representative of your peers. And those are the kind of accolades that I appreciate most. And listening to my colleagues telling terrible fibs about me, but nonetheless welcome fibs, I am really overwhelmed by what has happened tonight. It's been a, a wonderful life. There has not been one day in my broadcasting life when I've gone into work saying, I do not want to do this. And I feel so lucky and blessed because that is the case. It's not to say I haven't gone in sick, I haven't gone in hungover, I haven't gone in grumpy. I've done all of those things, but really I did want to go to work. Can I say finally, none of this would have been possible without herself at home. Because it is...
It is an unremitting job and it requires great tolerance on the part of the other half. Here I came home from America to celebrate my parents' 25th anniversary. Both of them have, have departed. But next year, I celebrate 25 years with Kathy. And um, it's, been, it's been a wonderful, a wonderful roller coaster ride. We've, we've had tough times. We've had all sorts of adventures, but we're still, we're still rocking on. And uh, the girls are here as well. And so look, thank you all for honoring me tonight. Um, it's a Lifetime Achievement Award. I hope there's still more life in the old dog yet. But for everything tonight, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>